Hey Ubers, Vivian here to share with you a little bit of love for the new Sizzix Magnetic Platform. You can use this with thinlets dies, framelits dies, and other wafer thin dies. Before I get started with the tutorial, I just want to show you what makes this magnetic platform so special and um, how it can be really, really useful for your uh, paper crafting and die cutting. So um, I have a Sizzix die and stamp set here. I'm not going to be using it for my project today, but I just want to show you um, how the magnetic platform works in conjunction with um, precise die cutting. So I have sort of a detailed stamped image. I'm going to set down my cutting plate on top of the magnetic platform. And then I'm going to set down my stamped image. And then I'm going to set down my little um, my little die, my little wafer thin die. And I don't know if you can see here, but it is has really great contact with the paper. And it's stuck on there because of the magnetic um, platform underneath. So it's not going anywhere. You don't have to tape it on there. You don't have to add a post-it note. See how it's... it's re it really wants to stick there. So this is just fantastic for die cutting using the wafer thin dies. So I'm just arranging it exactly where I want it and I don't have to use any other tool to get it to stay to stay there. And I put my secondary acrylic plate on top and I send it through the machine. So you can see this is going to work really great for getting your stamped images perfectly die cut, your stamped sentiments perfectly centered without having to go that extra step of taping your um, die in place. As you can see here, perfect. For my tutorial today, I'm going to be using thinlets dies from some of our uh, rather new collections. This is a really gorgeous one. It's called a uh, Moroccan card front. And these thin lit dies are really fantastic for the more intricate cuts. So in this case, I'm not really interested in precise die cutting. I don't have a stamped image that I'm worried about. But I do want to make sure that my die cut releases. So I don't know if you just saw that, but I did put in a uh, a piece of wax paper between my thinlet die and my cardstock. And that's going to help the die cut release very easily once it comes out. So you can see how easily these pieces come out. Um, I'm going to save all of those little beautiful intricate cuts for uh, poss possibly a layout. But do you see how easily that die cut comes out? This is a very elegant die and die cut and I think it could be used for dramatic effect in a number of projects. Um, I'm going to put that aside for now and uh, share with you some uh, a little bit of mixed media work. So I've got another nice thick piece of watercolor paper and I'm just going to show you guys how I missed. Um, I love to just pull the cap out and tap that little tube onto my paper surface. Uh, when I do this type of stuff, I like to use a nice, thick watercolor paper that will hold up to uh, applications of media. And I just alternate the tapping of the intense pigment, pigment with uh, spritzes of water. I'm a, a huge watercolor enthusiast, and I've been a student of watercolor for a really long time. Um, and I think that's why I gravitate towards the mist so much because they behave very much like watercolors. Um, so I let that dry. You can speed that up with a heat tool. And I'm just going to do some stamping with a, a beautiful, intricate leaf stamp. It's very delicate. Um, I got this little set from Michaels recently. It's um, their Recollections brand. And um, I'm doing some repeat stamping so you get some strong impressions and some really faint ones also. And I'm going into the areas that are somewhat quieter and um, livening up, up those areas just a little bit more with um, some, some of these beautiful leaf patterns. And you can see here all the detail. So I just love this. Um, I love using my mists in this way. And um, I think it's just so luminous. And this is perfect for autumn. Um, I almost don't want to cut into it. 
Um, but anyway, so here's my uh, Moroccan card front die cut out of the same thick watercolor paper. I'm going to use the Distress Ink in Black Soot again, uh, along with a blending tool, to uh, uh, ink through the holes in the die cut. And um, I'm very intentionally using these um, Distress Inks. I love them because um, as you can see here, um, you can spritz it and lighten it up a little bit by tapping off with a paper towel. Um, you can also spritz and just leave the little puddles of water on the inked areas, and then you get even more additional uh, splattering and texture in your paper crafted projects. This is a clear stamp from Kaiser Craft called Chicken Wire, and I received it in my August Scraps of Darkness kit. It's a kit club, and um, I love this type of stamp because it's just great for um, just that little extra oomph of texture where you need it. So I'm just um, adding that in, repeat stamping as well. So today is all about thinlets. And um, if you do have thinlets, I highly recommend this magnetic platform. This is the box, comma, milk carton thinlets die, and it's number 658823. This little die is great for um, packaging for the upcoming holidays. We have a, uh, Sizzix has a whole bunch of different um, box dies and um, pillow box, milk carton, you name it. Um, and depending on what kind of Christmas gifts you plan on giving, these make for very, very unique packaging. Um, so this is actually another piece that I cut using the same techniques, just a different palette of colors and a different leaf stamp from the same set, from the same recollection set. And um, the die comes with the uh, instructions, they're visual, so they're very easy to understand about where you need to place your adhesive. This is a Xyron um, double-sided adhesive, and you want to use a nice strong adhesive um, in the areas that the instruction sheet indicate. And um, you can fold along those score lines as I have done already, and um, make those folds just a little bit a little bit cleaner with a bone folder if you if you need to. So they they show you in the instructions that it's done in steps. First you um, seal the side, then you seal the base, and then you push in the folds for the top. And before you seal the top, um, you want to put in all your goodies. I decided to put seeds that I recently harvested as a gift. These are seeds of uh, hollyhock white hollyhock seed heads and they're really cool um, just a few plants gave me multitudes of seeds um, so I've got plenty of hollyhock seeds to give away and to grow myself for the next year and I'm just going to throw in those seed heads whole I've always been really fascinated by the way hollyhock seed heads form they are if I were to open one up you would see that they are arranged radially like uh, the spokes of a wheel I used a mini attacher to staple the top closed. Um, this is a die cut using um, the Sizzix Thin Lits die set number 659131 and that's labels comma long. So that's another uh, die set with some beautiful labels. Um, they're somewhat oblong and um, they have some beautiful intricate flourishes flourishes in there. I use some uh, leftover Black Magic Coordinations cardstock um, and sanded the edges so you could see a little bit of that orange. And I'm just using a white gel pen to uh, write my labels. If you're curious about what the seed heads of the Black Scabiosa look like, this is what it looks like. And um, they're really cool because uh, you'll see as I pull it out. The seed is at the very tip and it has this sort of little helicopter mechanism that helps the seed float down to the earth and penetrate in just the right way. These are also known as pincushion flower, but these are seeds that are uh, that make flowers that are black rather than the typical lavender or white that you'll see frequently at the gardening centers. 
I have some stills to share with you of my little precious milk cartons that are filled with seeds, which I think are gifts that keep on giving year after year. But I think you could easily put in uh, manageable portions of little treats for the holidays, um, healthy portions, and um, use this type of dye for projects and gifts throughout the year. Um, regarding this um, watercolor effect you see here, um, as you saw during the tutorial, it's actually quite quick. You just spritz it um, and stamp it. If you were to mist and stamp one large piece of watercolor paper in the way that I have today, you could get several of these cute little boxes really in one go and rather quickly. If you haven't been to our blog yet, please visit at blog.sizzix.com. We have so many tutorials that cover the whole range of paper crafting styles. And also you can visit our website to see all the products we offer. And if you haven't gotten enough inspiration from me, please visit me at contadinak.com. Thanks so much. Bye.